This is FM Gold Channel of All India Radio. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on nine mantras of Prime Minister against COVID-19. The participants are Shekhar Iyer, political analyst, and Vijay Kranti, journalist. Mr. Shekhar Iyer, we are right now meeting at a point. Not only India, but the whole world is going through a crisis, which is caused by coronavirus of a new type, which is infecting now people in hundreds of thousands across the world. It's first time happening in our historic memory that a disease which is spreading so fast, the prime minister of a country comes and leads from the front. He takes us for cooperation of the people and expresses faith in them in handling such a crisis. Don't you think that this is something very interesting approach and effective approach? It is a very, very effective approach. And directly appealing to the people is a way of, you know, involving everyone because this battle against coronavirus is something that only the government cannot handle or only the government will fight. It has to be fought at all levels. It has to be fought at community level. It has to be fought at individual level and at the official level. Whatever has to be done by the government, it is being done. Whether stepping up the testing facilities, increasing the hospital facilities, whatever that is being taken place. But at the same time, we have to understand and appreciate the nature of the challenge. Therefore, the Prime Minister's appeal is essentially explain to our people, to the very common people, to individuals, what is the challenge before us? What are the steps that have to be taken by each of us to prevent the spread of the disease? And number three, what is the future? How are we going to come out of this? And in order to come out of this, what kind of resolution is necessary in us? And Prime Minister always had way with his words, way with his appeal with the people. And the Prime Minister used this, this capital, this capital that he enjoys with the people in terms of as a best communicator. So he can directly talk to... Yes, that we see. After a long time, we have a Prime Minister who is not only a wonderful communicator. He has the capability of communicating with the last person of the country. For example, the way he has used radio to communicate with people. Even leave aside the literate people, he has gone right down to the poorest people and people living in far-flung areas. Even to the children, he's talking directly. So this style of Prime Minister Modi, to communicate very effectively with the people directly. Do you think this is going to help us a little different way as compared to what is happening in other countries in this crisis, the corona crisis? Definitely, I see Vijay Krantiji, there is, has been a, already a very great profound impact. If you look at the cities today, whether it is Delhi, Mumbai or any big city or even small towns, I am already seeing that people are avoiding going out. Most of our streets are deserted. Public transport is there, but very few people are using it. Because the central theme of the message is to avoid the public space as much as possible and to do only essential traveling. Essentially, if it is essence, you have to come out, please do it. And if you are part of the essential services, do it. Otherwise, do not come into the public space. Maintain that physical distance or what is nowadays called the social distance. And at the same time, protect yourself. Be alert and in your own way contribute to the prevention and spread of this coronavirus. That is where you see the multiplying effect. As you said very rightly, of course, it's government's responsibility. It is responsibility of the government network, the machinery. But it can be functional and result-oriented only when those people who are the target of uh, this or who are going to be victims of this uh, problem, if they start participating. Prime Minister has come out with the very interesting nine points. You have already mentioned a few of them. For example, he says that uh, there should be what we are calling it Janta curfew. Curfew by the people, for the people. And he has called for, in addition to, as you said. And this Janta curfew on one day, the coming Sunday, March 22nd, which he has called. You see, though it is from morning till night, I think he wants us to understand this is not just for a day. This Janata curfew is going to be a voluntary way of, you know, keeping off. Till such time, authorities feel that it is safe for us to return to normal. And it's very scientific. And though it is on a single day, I think the whole idea is to, you know, spread that message. That sensitivity among people that they should start. That it. this curfew, okay, one Sunday is, has been chosen so that, you know, trains are, will not run, your metro services will not run, buses will not run, shops will, of course, are remaining closed, the malls are already closed, cinemas are also good, but at the same time, it is a self-imposed segregation. Yeah. It's a self-imposed restriction which is, I think, much more important and keeping with the Gandhiji's way of approach, you know. Yeah, Gandhiji, involving the people. Gandhiji always favored self-restraint. 
in every matter. He said, whatever has to be done, we have to do it ourselves. You know, in France, what has happened, I understand that in order to enforce this segregation, they have got one lakh troops on the street just to push people back into homes. And they are charging 350 euros if anybody found violating. We have not gone for that kind of thing because mm -hmm. any kind of, you know, public enforcement of complete lockdown as many people to even to enforce it. Yes, yes. And on the other hand, one very interesting aspect of his uh, address to the nation, he has somewhere identified element of gratitude that those people, for example, doctors, uh, nurses, paramedical staff and, uh, you know, police people, the army people, the journalists and, uh, you know, the safai karmacharis, etc. All those people who are involved in running the society and the health services he has called the whole nation to stand up for five minutes and clap for them. It's a very beautiful way of, you know, energizing oneself because gratitude always not only energizes the person to whom you are conveying, but also energizes the person who conveys. Yes. And I think this is a very beautiful way of the entire nation, you know, energizing. In fact, he said, since the occasion of Vasatha Navaratri is coming from March the 25th, this is one, and Navratri, we observe and we celebrate this Navratri twice a year. There are many Navratris, yeah. but two big Navratris, one is the Vasan Navratri and the Sharad Navratri. These Navratris are actually to energize ourselves. And as Prime Minister said, this gives us Shakti. Now, this Shakti for each one of us and for the community as a whole and for those people who are out taking that high risk of protecting us, nurturing us and caring for us. You know, this is a great inspiration for uh, those people. You can imagine that when the doctors, when the nurses, when uh, the police people, when they discover the whole nation is standing for them, clapping for them, that will give them a new energy and new commitment. Definitely, because he knows whoever is out, you know, either at the airport or at the railway station or out on the street performing some important public duty, he knows that what he does is a very valuable thing and it's a very big contribution for our country. And then at the same time, you know, to keep the job of hospitals and uh, the medical services and security agencies, everything, to minimum and focused on the real issue, he has appealed to the people that if they can avoid going to hospital for some, any problem, which is a routine problem or a routine surgery, he says avoid it. That is going to reduce the burden on uh, these agencies. And uh, at the same time, he has appealed to people about avoid panic buying. And there he is reassuring people that, don't worry, all the services, milk and other uh, provisions, they will continue working for you. I think, Mr. Shekhar, here this gives kind of uh, self-confidence. There has been a tendency in some parts of the country, you know, people have, you know, well-educated people also, they have gone into some kind of a panic, fearing there will be shortages. That's why Prime Minister assured in the broadcast that things are available in plenty, whether it is food or your daily items, they are available in plenty. Today, the Kendriya Bandars are full of grocery items. There is no shortage. And you see that today... I know somehow they got the impression that this is going to remain closed forever. And, and of course, this has not just happened in our country. We are seeing even Western capitals. The supermarkets are all empty. I mean, this kind of fear is not necessary because the restrictions are temporary. And those shops that sell grocery items, your milk, all this is going to be continuously available to us. There mm. is no need for us to unnecessarily create a panic and spread fear. And uh, uh, the Prime Minister has focused especially on uh, the vulnerable uh, age groups. For example, those who are plus 60 or children below 10 years. He has specifically in his nine points has mentioned these sections of society that they deserve special care. He has asked the families and these individuals also to specially take care of them. I think Mr. Shekhar here, this is again uh, a very contributory factor towards involving people and making people aware of the situation, and especially the vulnerable ones. It's important that, uh, you know, particularly though, as you mentioned, those who are 60 to 65 or above, that since the researchers have shown that these people are more vulnerable to respiratory problems, that they need to take care similarly children, so that we can ask elders in our families, you know, we can tell them, please do not risk yourself at a time like this, this is necessary. After all, it is young people who care for the elders. And the yeah. Prime Minister's appeal was the kind of, so that the family will in turn take care of the elders in their year, and as well as also the small children. There is another very interesting element in his appeal, which uh, when we heard him, so it was moving when he told people that you must have some employees 
हाउस वाइफ हैज ए मेड हेल्पिंग हर शॉपकीपर हैज हैंड्स एम्प्लॉयज हु आर वर्किंग फॉर देम सिमिलरली एस्टेब्लिशमेंट बिजनेस हाउसेज दे हैव एम्प्लॉयज हु विल बी आउट ऑफ वर्क फॉर मेनी रीजन एंड स्पेशल ऑन दिस डे ट्वेंटी सेकेंड डे विल बी एट होम ही हैज अपील टू ऑल ऑफ देम टू टेक केयर दैट देयर सैलरीज आर नॉट लॉस्ट दैट दे शुड बी पेड फॉर इट do you see something very interesting uh, human element in it absolutely i think it's a very humanitarian angle you see after all these people are dependent on those who have employed them whether it is maid servant or drivers or gardeners so it's a way of conveying look even if they if they do not come to work do not cut their wages because it's a lower strata which bears the brunt of any economic challenge that comes and at the same time he has announced special task force headed by the finance minister and uh, our finance minister nirmala sitaram ji will be studying you know sector wise what is needed whether it is our airline industry tourism industry hotel industry or even general you know business what kind of relief may be necessary one question is many people were hoping and some people were critical saying that the prime minister should have announced the quantum of so much money will be given to these people these sections this establishment of economic response task force i think it's going to look after those points and we expect some you cannot expect you know the prime minister will straight away make some announcement without the concerned department studying the impact first you see whether it is going to last for two weeks or for a month or couple of months i think it's a very scientific approach rather than making some big announcement for the sake of headlines prime minister has done what is which i think is a very reasonable approach which is a careful approach and definitely the government is sensitive to the needs of the industry and to different sectors we have already seen so many ways you know after this economic slowdown has happened you know sector wise some relief has been provided so similarly i expect the government to go into these issues make a proper assessment and wherever necessary whatever is whether it's a bank moratorium lowering of interest or postponement of payment of installments because there has to be a, a slew of measures but those measures will have to be carefully deliberated and directed at people who need the relief and they have to be precise in terms of quantity another issue is of social distancing he has mentioned it that uh, this is a situation where the viral uh, infection is spreading from person to person so he has advised people to maintain social distancing do you think that people it's going to be really effective so far vijay prathi ji as you mentioned the problem that has come to india now the corona virus is is purely right now because of the contact in the sense people who went abroad to those affected countries have come back and they have been tested they have been found some cases have been found to be positive and then the people who have come in contact with them yes and fortunately we have not yet faced that situation of stage 3 which is the community transmission that is a much bigger challenge but so far since it is spreading through contact therefore we need to have this physical seclusion or physical distance or social distance in the sense we avoid parties we avoid mix up of friends we avoid gatherings which are not necessary and traveling moment and traveling even commuting commuting because even traveling in a train or even going by air you know crowding of airports and railway station and bus stations this can lead to a situation where the contact increases and ideally i think this is necessary today because you can save trouble for the future because we do not know how the contacts have spread so far so that shows that uh, this decision of the prime minister of coming personally in front of the nation addressing them and asking for uh, cooperation and support and even people's initiative in handling this national and rather international crisis that shows that here is the prime minister who is awake to the needs of the situation who has the capacity to lead from the front so let us hope that uh, this especially the prime minister's appeal about nine major points and uh, the approach this country is adopting has been so far successful and let us hope we are going to get through this crisis in a much uh, better way than unfortunately many of the countries are already facing thank you very much thank you you were listening to a discussion on nine mantras of prime minister against covid-19 the participants were shekhar ayer political analyst and vijay kranti journalist this program was produced and presented by the news services division of all india radio this program is also available on our website newsonair.com you can also follow us on the news on air app for updates you may email your opinion about this program at airnsdtalks@gmail.com at